Greetings fellow humans, Bad Mark here with another transmission from Mac Tech Keyboards. And today I'm taking a look at a keyboard that a lot of you have requested and I finally was able to get a hold of one. It wasn't that I've got a long list of requests of keyboards and I mean unfortunately I can't get a hold of every single one. But on this one I reached out to Ala and I was like, hey, can you see all the requests I've got? You guys sent me out one to take a look at. Now I've taken a look at a basically the same model keyboard, but single backlight wired version from another company, but I've not taken a look at the Ala F75 Pro, which is what I'm taking a look at today. A lot of you guys have asked for me to review this keyboard and finally the day has come. So this keyboard for the past year or so um, has been one of the most I guess I should say, I mean, for plastic keyboards, it has been one of the most recommended keyboards that I've seen. Now, I have reviewed a couple of other Ala models. I really like their construction, the way they're built. Um, like I said, I took a look at a wired single LED version of this, and I like what I saw, but I do believe that this one is actually has some improvements over that one. Um, this is the latest revision. I don't know if they, some companies don't really have revisions. They just, you know, improve the product. And once stock runs out, they move the new revision in. So I don't know if this has any new revision or anything, but I know I'm ready to go ahead and jump on into it. So let's go ahead and see what's in the box. All right, so in the box, we find that we have a user manual. And this is going to have all the key mappings already, as well as what the knob does, volume and mute. We also have an easy, handy-dandy user card. These, I always, for the most part, unless it's a, it, there's some keyboards that they come from the same companies, and I just have already rec remembered what, you know, the default mappings they have. But when I'm dealing with a keyboard that has new mappings, I like keeping one of these around for the first few days when I'm using it, because it helps me to remember as I use them, then muscle memory will kick in and then I could store them back with the box, but it's always nice to have a easy to access and see user card. In the accessories compartment, we have a wire switch and keycap puller, pretty standard one. We have a fairly standard USB-A to USB-C connector cable, and we have a couple of extra switches. Now this, I really appreciate when manufacturers include extra switches in the box, even if it's just a couple. If one goes wrong, I know personally, I've got a bit of OCD and unless I, you know, purposely replace one of the, you know, like put a clicky underneath the caps lock um, or something like that to, you know, so to give myself a, a, an alarm of when I accidentally hit caps. Um, I like to have all of the switches under the keys the same. So even, you know, replacing one switch, I'm kind of, my mind's going to always remember when I look down at the keyboard, that, oh, that one switch. So if for some reason one switch gets damaged, gets lost, falls into the ninth dimension, um, goes along with the TARDIS for an adventure or something, having an extra switch or two is always greatly appreciated. Now these our Leo Bog switches. Nice. They're nice, deeper, dustproof linear. I, I'm finding that a lot of these linears with dustproof stems do just tend to have a, a deeper tone. It could be because they have more mass. I mean, obviously the plastic and material has something to do with it, but lately I've been finding that dustproof stems just have a deeper, tiny bit deeper of a tone than standard stems. It also has a light diffuser that's in there. We'll take a closer look at this switch later and see what it is. And here we are with the Ala F75 Pro, the three modes, 75% with a knob keyboard from Ala. Thankfully, they do include a fitted dust cover. It's always appreciated when they do that. And it's actually one of the better quality ones, very sturdy plastic. So not only is it going to protect it from dust, it can protect it even from stuff falling on it. I mean, a cup of coffee, I mean, it might warp this a bit, but it ain't going to get anything inside of the keyboard. So using a dust cover on your keyboard when it's not in use, it's always something that I recommend. So taking a look here, we have a standard 
compact or compressed 75%. We have a blocker um, so that we can figure out the uh, modifier keys from the arrow keys. We do have a four key navigation column. We have a knob that appears to have an aluminum rim with a plastic insert. Pulling off the knob, we see that we have a standard six millimeter a potentiator meter knob, knobs, D knob, potentiator meter knobs will not work on here, D shape, because they won't be able to fit over this. So if you do want to replace the knob, you're gonna have to make sure that it's a completely round six millimeter diameter knob. Now, this one does have a shine through set, but because it's south facing, they're gonna shine through the front, which I like. Now let's take a look at these keycaps. 1.6 millimeters, these are some thick keycaps. I'm gonna assume until I check the specs that they're ABS because of the shine through that they have, though they do kind of feel like ABS. Um, I do like front shine through keycaps. I'm not crazy about shine through, but if I'm gonna have them, I prefer south shine through and yes we do have south facing pcb and here's that leo bog switch again a nice linear it has a deeper kind of marbly bottom out gotta check to see what switch that is stabilizers do seem to be well attached they have just the slightest of wiggle and if we unclip them we find that we are well lubricated on the inside of the stems and we have just the tiniest amount. Oh yeah, just the tiniest amount. I can just feel it on the rest of the wire, touching the elbows right there, the two most important contact points. Now I've got greasy hands. Looking inside of the case to uh, peek into the PCB does not appear that there is compatibility for screw and stabilizers, so we're going to be using these stabilizers. Thankfully, they're well attached, especially once locked. And I don't think they'll uh, cause any issues. And we do have a south facing PCB that has the PET and the IXPE layers, or the hi fi layers as they're called. And just to get a quick preview of how everything sounds, Those stabilizers sound excellent, and that's probably the best stock plastic spacebar that I've heard. Honestly, that's that's pleasant. It's rare to say the spacebar is pleasant on a stock plastic keyboard. So there is a reason why this particular model is so popular. It sounds great out of the box. It actually has a deeper, where there's a lot of plastic keyboards that are leaning more into the foam and the, the layers and trying to get more of a poppy, high-pitched, clacky type sound profile or glassy. Um, this one's actually leaning into the deeper because this truly is probably one of the deepest stock plastic keyboards that I've come across. And it is, it does sound better than the other model. And if I, if I have the time, I'll pull that one out though. Not exactly sure where it is at the moment. Um, but this one I can definitely, I, I, I remember that one sounding okay, but I think it only had IXP and it didn't have the PET layer. So like I said, this one definitely, This one definitely sounds much better. Um, I've got to say, it is quite a nice keyboard. Let's go ahead and plug it in and see what it looks like with the lights on. <laughs> I was like, no, it's the single color one. No, nope. no, it's not. Yeah. So as we can see, the shine through the lights when they glow up coming through those front shine through legends that is a to me that's how shine through should be done i know 
Other people will say, I prefer north facing and shine through on the top. And that's fine. That's, that's the beauty of this hobby. Everyone gets to like the way they like it. There's no reason for other people not to like it that way. Um, we have to take a look at the software to see about, I'm sure we have per key RGB and see if we have the functionality to program layers, which I'm pretty sure that we do. Oh, we got a caps like an indicator right next to the caps lock. Very nice. Having a caps like lock indicator right next to where the caps lock is. It's, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's still useful when it's over here or over there or, you know, somewhere else, but right next to the key or underneath the key, that's the best spot for me. All right. So just a quick inspection of it. We see that we have the pocket for the USB dongle and thankfully it is branded with all it. So we're not going to have any issue in case we lose that. We have a switch for the connection mode, Bluetooth wired or 2.4. And we also have our type C connect. It is a tad bit recessed, but I think most cables should actually work in there. I mean, this one usually is a pain on other ones and it worked just fine in here. The key cap profile on these are OEM, uh, but I'm barely confident that's part of what's giving this keyboard that deeper tone. Just the specs. Today, we are taking a look at the Ala F75 Pro a plastic three mode, 75% mechanical keyboard. It has a gasket mounted PC plate with an FR4 option, it has a flex cut south facing hot swap three and five pin compatible PCB with hi-fi layers and dampening. It is preloaded with factory lubed Leobog Reaper linear switches and OEM double shot PBT side or front shine through keycaps. It comes weighing in at 980 grams and has a battery capacity of 4,000 milliamp hours. The chin sits at 22 and a half millimeters from the typing surface, while the back sits at 31.5 millimeters, providing for a default typing angle of seven degrees. Flipping down the first set of included fold-out feet will raise the back height to 36 millimeters, changing your angle of typing to nine degrees. Flipping down the final set of fold-out feet will take the back height to 44 millimeters and your angle of typing to 13 degrees. This keyboard MSRPs for $79.99, but goes on sale quite regularly at well below that. Links below. All right, so to download the software, we go to allastar.com forward slash driver and select Alla International, unless you have a Chinese version of this keyboard. Um, this will redirect us to a Google Drive page that will show several different options. Um, I don't know what the reset is, so I left that one alone. I downloaded the three mode all F75 driver. The install is fairly standard. You go through, you select it, and it'll open it up. And it goes right to the main programming screen. Now, Thankfully, we have a top, our default layer. We have a function one layer and a function two layer. We also have profiles. Profiles are different. Profiles allow you to create different sets of all the function layers, default all the way down to tap. Um, tap means hitting it quick and fast. So we do have the ability to uh, remap keys in this situation. I went ahead and did insert underneath my delete for the function one. We then have the light effects as with, this is a common software package. We have a selection of predefined light effects that we can choose from, or we can do self-defined, which is also per key RGB. And that's where we can select colors and then go ahead and set the colors that we want those to be. Once we save that, that actually goes in the rotation when you're cycling through the lights with the function backslash key. We have, then we have the music effect section. I've seen that, that that's been there for quite some time, basically just music matching to the beat, the RGB. We have a basic macro editor where we can record, type out what we want, and then we can stop recording and go through and modify the keys, the delay between the keys and save it. Then we can go back to our regular um, look at the keyboard and actually map key combinations to macros and even set how many times they repeat if you want that. 
in the settings section, it gives us the info of which firmware and software version we're running. It gives us the ability to turn tap on. So if you're going to be using tap keys, go ahead and turn this on. Also allows us to turn sleep on or off. And if we leave it on at what, how much time before it goes to sleep. Debounce, I usually leave it at where it's at. It works fine for me. And then we have the reset, which will take the keyboard back to its original settings. So we have a well-built 75% plastic keyboard um, with the knob. We do have software that is Windows only, but does allow us to go uh, down to function one, function two, as well as a tap layer. It allows us some control over the sleep abilities. It is three mode. Uh, the MSRP is $79.99. I've seen this keyboard as low as $50. Um, it goes up and down. It's kind of one of those prices that moves. Um, I do think that a lot of people, um, even if they've already had another mechanical keyboard, I think that this one is going to be, especially if they haven't, you know, they haven't had a, a mechanical keyboard from the last couple of years and see this keyboard and the price and the features that it has, I think a lot of people are gonna be happy with it. Um, obviously, it does not have software for Macintosh, um, not that I was able to find anyway, so basically you're stuck with Windows. I hope there's a day where we can move away from Windows, but that's just me. But as long as you have access to one Windows machine, you can you know, hook it up, install the driver software, program the layers, the keys, add any macros that you want, go ahead and save it, and it's going to go along with the keyboard. Like I created a um, created a very basic per key RGB red and blue right there. Top few rows are red, bottom rows are blue, and it goes, once you save it, it's in the rotation, which is a pretty nice um, feature, so you can just, you know, bring it right up. I quite enjoy how this sounds. I like that it does both... It kind of kind of tackles both things that enthusiasts more want and what gamers also want. Um, with the gamers, you know, nice RGB. The um, PC plate does allow that light to even, you know, just def diffract further and you know come up through the uh, in between the keys, but also it comes up nicely through the shine through legends. The PC plate does a great job at diffusing the LEDs. Now there is an FR4 plate option. Obviously that would not diffuse the lights as much between the keys, but it still would allow for the legends to light through from the south facing um, PCB. So I honestly, I really like this. I only use the other model. I keep forgetting the model name. That's why I'm not mentioning it. I couldn't find it. I didn't look very hard. But um, I only use it for, I want to say, a day or two, if not that much. But this one, I definitely want to put in rotation. And I've got a lot of aluminum keyboards in rotation right now. But every once in a while, I put a, put a plastic one up. And, and it's not that I may like it more than the aluminum one that I've been using, but I like it just as much. Like, I, it's, it's really, I mean... Yeah, do I like, you know, the other one, but if I'm not looking at it, if I'm just working, the less the keyboard gets in my way and the more that it helps me to be productive, then the less I'm going to think about it, especially replacing it. I'm just going to use it. Um, you know, with the, there's a saying that, you know, if you've done a great job, nobody really notices. It's only when things go wrong, you know, do you notice? So I like keyboards that don't get in my way, allow me to work um, and just feel nice and I mean like I said sometimes I play really loud music sometimes I don't get that ability but I get a nice sound from my keyboard and I also like I said I prefer using gasket mounted keyboards so that I'm doing the least amount of injury to cause RSI because uh, the gasket actually gives a little bit but this keyboard, I see why everybody has asked me to take a look at it. It, it really is a nice 75% as far as the plastic ones go. I'm working already on the aluminum 75% tier list video, and that'll come out. I'd like to do a 75% plastic and a 65% plastic, but I may just do a 65% aluminum and then move down to plastic. But 
I've got, I've got a lot of irons in the fire right now, so I'm just doing my best to get this information out to you guys. Also, now that I have it, I can help to field support calls. I mean, don't don't get me wrong. I don't work for all. I don't work for any manufacturer. Heck, I don't work for Epo Maker, and I help. I do my best to help people out with Epo Maker issues with their products. Um, <clears throat> but when I have the keyboard. It is so much easier for me to be able to say, okay, hold on a second, plug it in, load up the software, or, you know, whatever the case may be, try to replicate what they're doing and see if I can actually accomplish what they're trying to accomplish, or if I can actually, you know, see the bug that they're having on, you know, is this an issue with their unit or is this an issue with just the firmware or just the way the keyboard's made or, any number of things. When I have the keyboard in hand, it allows me, it provides for me the best information that I can have when I can have a unit for me to be able to troubleshoot and many times help people out. So, um, and not for nothing, I, I, I enjoy it. I, I enjoy solving problems. I've been in IT in one form or another, whether it's programming or doing service calls and leaving a customer happy with a solution like, oh, I don't longer wasting time. And oh, and this is an easier way to do it, or it works the way it's finally supposed to work. And leaving somebody in a much better place than when you found them. I call me an optimist, but I think that's just a great thing. It's a positive thing. And, you know, I mean, if nothing else, you know, positivity, it goes around it's contagious so anyway um if i can do that with keyboards it it's very it's much easier for me to troubleshoot when i have the keyboard and i know there's been some questions that i've been able to answer others i haven't been able to answer like is the knob um programmable no the knob is not programmable though that was answered by another user at one point when i came up so i was at least able to repeat that information it would be nice i mean really the only thing that would make this keyboard basically top of the 75 percent if they released a qmk via version a true qmk via version the ala f75 pro is really a lovely three mode 75 percent um plastic keyboard that being significant in its weight it is not it is not so heavy as an aluminum keyboard this is below a kilogram so it's not going to be that much more to add if you have to throw it in your backpack and get on the road with it um 4, milliamp hour battery i'm curious how long that will last it obviously will last a lot longer if you turn off or turn down your leds so that's just uh one of those facts of life, but 4,000 milliamp hours, I would assume a good week or two you should get without any problems, but I'll have to use it until I actually have any, until you can actually come up with some, you know, something, some idea of the battery life. Now I will come back to this keyboard. Um, I want to see how it's built on the inside. I want to see if we can change the, um, the tone. I do like these Reaper switches. These are the first Leo by Rip Reaper switches I've had a chance to take a look at. Um, and I actually quite like them. They're very nice, deeper sounding, uh, I want to say palm based uh, linear switches. So in the combination with how this is built and everything, they really just come off with some really nice sounding switches. So I can recommend this keyboard, especially if you do some smart shopping and try to find the cheapest place to source it from i'll provide a couple links down below um otherwise i do hope that you guys enjoyed this review as always if you have any questions comments suggestions for when i come back to this keyboard please leave them down below i do my best to answer comments as quickly as possible until the next transmission keep calm and keyboard on